So right guys, today on the Mental Wealth Podcast we've got uh, Taylor McDonald. So he's a business owner, he's got his own business called uh, Merlin's Plant Hire and he's a property investor. Um, Adam, have you got this up promotion for us today? Yeah, so um, if you're looking for any groundworks, um, construction, kind of tooling, uh, Merlin's Plant Hire, anywhere between Dundee and Aberdeen, um, Taylor and his great company cover that. Also, um, Angus House Buyers and Far Seed Property are his uh, property companies that we'll go through in a bit more detail today so we always like to start you know with like the beginning how did it start what was what, what was li- life like growing up for yourself just quite normal to be honest just a regular upbringing um just usual we live quite rural so it was always mm. summertime you'd be out building dens jumping in the rivers just usual in the woods and that you know what i mean yeah, just having a good stuff. time cutting about the streets being a nuisance <laughs> there's not really much quite, going on is it quite a t- uh, tight-knit community where you stay oh definitely oh, yeah. Yeah. it's almost too tight-knit if anything right. eh? like, you, right. can't, uh, you can't do anything without the whole town knowing it it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good and it's bad everyone knows your business and it's it's alright yeah. right, right. so if there's a bad bat fly flying about you everyone knows oh, oh, yeah, the next so day though eh? the next it's so bad right. you've done that and then you're like oh, oh no I don't yeah. know about it so yeah, it gets like that it's good, it's good. My my entire family stay in the same town, so right, okay, I don't okay. have to travel. Christ, half of them stay on the same street, to be honest with you. Right, okay. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's good, it's good and it's bad. We don't, yeah. I don't quite live in Brecon, we live just mm-hmm. outside me and my partner. Mm-hmm. We're looking to move a bit further afield, I think, but we're just mm-hmm. taking it as it comes just now. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Obviously, the property itself, like, um, the, the market is pretty high, you know, so maybe in New Year's things would probably die down. Um, to be honest, we don't even own the own house we stay in, we just rent just rent, now for the time being, I've always rented. I like the I like the freedom that allows us. Uh, yeah. We can stay there for, because yeah, yeah, yeah. we move nearly every year, every two years. Yeah, that's just, just, yeah. Or did you move then quite locally? Or yeah, just, yeah, just thought about it. I've stayed, Christ, I moved out when I was 19, and mm. I think I've maybe had about five or six houses. Oh, since really? then. Yeah, I just yeah. like to chop and change, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Try different things, nice see, see different areas yeah. and that. stuff. Fantastic. So um, obviously so, uh, during your younger years, what was your sort of work experience like sort of growing up? My uh, my dad's got a landscaping company. Right, okay. And was, since I was I think four years old he's run right, that. Right. Um, as soon as I could fill a wheelbarrow or lift a brick, I was <laughs> on the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, didn't really have much of a choice to be honest. Yeah. Summer holidays, tarty holidays, anything like that, just always out grafting and working. Fair enough, man. Uh, I mean I can relate to that, you know, my dad's been in the grocery business all his life, so I've been doing that, you know, in the shops uh, since like, mm. as you say, as soon as I could stand above the above the counter. Because <laughs> <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know, I, I, I mean I actually obviously like when you're out and you're doing rounds work, I remember do you remember Craig Turner that used to be in our year at school? Mm-hmm. I remember he that he was was sat at, he, I think he left like quite younger, like when he was like early years of like high school, yeah. maybe about fourth or fifth year, didn't he stay on? But he was doing grounds work. I remember he came in like one summer and he looked as if he'd been in like Spain for about five oh, months. So I was like, yeah. he was so tanned, like, it's just, always the same. Aye, yeah. aye, aye, aye. So, nah, that's mad. And, uh, um, the, so, how did, how, what was the transition like? So, how did you get into you know the grounds work construction and the, you know the company mm. you've got there? A lot of the experience came from working with my dad. Yeah. Um, to be honest, it was kind of a. I didn't. I've always worked with him in between jobs. If that mm, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's not always just been working with him. So when yeah. I actually left school, I saw my time as a chef. Right, okay, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I really enjoyed it. I liked the high pressure environment. Mm. I liked. I, I've always enjoyed taking nothing and making it into something. Yeah, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, so you've got yeah, loads yeah. of ingredients. You make a nice plate of food. You've got a really shit flat. You make it mm, in a nice yeah, one. Yeah, I really enjoyed that fun. process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, when I hit about nineteen, I was working long hours, getting paid dog shit money to be ah, honest yeah, and yeah, I yeah. wanted to go out drinking with my mates and that and having a good life yeah. and, and you don't do that as a chef because you're on top of three you're getting split enough. shifts and yeah. that and you're off on a Monday and Tuesday and there's nothing yeah. worse so yeah. I stopped that and I actually started working as a baker after that right, okay. my dad's mate owned three bakeries in the local area so right, I started okay. working there nice early start <laughs> oh, it was 10 o'clock at night till 6 o'clock in the morning five Oof. days a week jeez oh man it wasn't too bad I got so I impeded in your nightlife for a wee bit more but I suppose you're not doing that on the weekend yeah probably not exactly so it was in between it wasn't as bad as the, the chef in. Yeah. But um, I stopped that, went back to work with my dad for a week while mm. I passed the time. Yeah. And then I really wanted to get into oil, to mm. be honest with you, because well, you, you're about the same age, you'll know yourselves uh, yeah. in school, anyone that wanted to make money, you went into mm. oil. Uh, yeah. It's not really the case now. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. At the time, everybody that had money or was doing well was in yeah. oil, so I wanted to get into that. Mm. And uh, I got myself a job at a welding fabrication company quite local. Right, okay. Worked there for maybe six months to a year. Right. And then mm-hmm. I went up to Aberdeen. Right. Worked in a company called ASCO, which just like does all the, the containers for shipping and stuff. Right, 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 okay. And then I moved on to pressure testing right, for yeah. pipes and stuff. I yeah. was there for about two years, really enjoyed that. Yeah, so pressure testing as well, right? that's that stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, 24 hour tests, stuff like that. I really right, enjoyed right. the shifts, the money, the guys you were working with, just everything. It was challenging, which I quite mm-hmm. enjoyed. Mm-hmm. But then, oh, Chris, I think this was what maybe. 
2014 when the oil first dropped, when right. the thing got shelved, yeah, yeah. we all got paid off, so I went back oh. to working with my dad. Aye. And by this point, I was just like, me and my dad are very similar, so we always mm. clash heads. Uh, and yeah. at this point, I was just like, nah, I can't do this anymore. Right. And then, um, I'm still plodded on for a wee while, a couple more years, dotted in and out. And then, a local plant hire company actually changed. They started going into load testing. Right, yeah. So, right, okay. instead of hiring out machines, they bought a few big cranes. Mm. And they were doing load testing for offshore stuff. So, mm. I noticed there was a gap and all the, yeah. being in my dad's landscaping company, I knew mm. all the other trades yeah. mm. and they were always moaning, there's no machines, there's no yeah, this, yeah, there's yeah. no that. Yeah, yeah. So me and my dad went half on a digger to begin with, mm-hmm. just an old thing, proper rattly old digger. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, just bouncing across the <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and uh, it paid itself off in about six to eight months. Oh, really? really? And I was yeah. like, shit, there's something here because yeah. you were just dropping it off in the morning. I was going to work anyway and then yeah. picking it up at night and I'm yeah. like, like this, I was uh, like, yeah. I'll just stop going to work and start dropping that off. Dropping stuff off, uh, yeah. And uh, it was to provide a bit more free time, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. And but obviously, as it's grown legs and arms mm. and legs, I've just gotten busier and busier. Full fan. Yeah. 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 And are you, are you uh, by yourself in the company, or have you got? Staff? No, we've got employees. Right, we've got two stuff. guys on site, and yeah. then I'm doing most of the office duties just now. Right. There's three of us, right. but in January we're taking on a depot manager, right. Right. and she'll basically oversee all the admin and the communication. Right. And things so like that. systemizing it so that it can kind of run itself ah, while you. Maybe yeah. not itself, but so I can do more site visits, so yeah. I can go out and get more jobs, bigger contracts, exactly. things like that. Working right. on the business rather than yeah. 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 similar like to like a, a PA sort of thing, just mm. sort of, like kind I of doing probably a bit more intense. I would say because yeah. like basically I want to just I want her to run the business yeah. and then yeah. I can just go in and be like she's like boom you're here yeah. and I'm like, that's fine that suits me perfectly you can sort of see in the future you have more sort of scope to innovate and develop it sort of yeah thing. basically yeah. I'd really like to open a few depots to be honest I'd like to yeah. travel yeah. further to the central belt there's a lot more work down here than mm. there is maybe not a lot more but there's a lot more people there's a yeah, lot more yeah, opportunities yeah, it's so always going to be yeah, mm. de- where there's more houses because there's obviously more exactly. business for yourself so, exactly. but, um, so to see that mindset of um, you know, working on the business rather than in the business mm-hmm. when did that start to click was that through your education the property education or what um, did you always have that in mind or? a bit of both I've always mm-hmm. wanted a relatively passive income yeah. mm-hmm. the, the thought of slugging away until I was 50 on the yeah, yeah. it just doesn't appeal to me to be honest uh, yeah. but you can't just up and out and yeah. just expect something it's to like, work so yeah, it has to be a slow and yeah. gradual process yeah. absolutely yeah. Uh, it's, there's definitely something as well like seeing a gap in the market like that like you're working in that sort of environment and mm-hmm. like you've, you've, you've sort of saying to yourself right where is the need where is the niche in yeah. it and you've probably obviously spotted that like yeah. everyone's complaining there's not enough equipment on site for you know like sort of obviously grounds work and stuff like that mm-hmm. but it, it's funny how you go back to the, the point where you, you said like you said before I remember in our podcast that it's like you like you take pride in doing something. Remember we talked about like cleaning your car. Yeah. If you clean your car and hoover it out mm. and like just clean the alloys and it's yeah. all spick and span. Yeah. It might only last a week, but see when you like you just first like you first finish it, like oh, satisfying. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good. Good. yeah, it's satisfying. No. Mm. I can like you know, so from your business I can see, you know, the 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 Mayor's plan now, how that's you know transferred into property investment. Yeah. Um and like so how long have you been investing in property, you know yourself before you started Personally I the first investment I made in property was twenty one. So mm-hmm. I might be twenty eight soon so I'll be just coming up for seven years. Seven now. years right. Okay. Right. Okay. It was, it's been a slow process. It yeah. wasn't it was I bought one, I actually got left some money mm. and I had the great idea and I was like, I'll buy some property. I always wanted property. Mm-hmm. And I always knew it and I was like if I don't do something with this, I'm just going to end up wasting the money. Yeah, uh, it's like you're getting pissed off a lot. Hundred percent. Yeah, and when I was at that age, that's exactly what would have happened. Then. So mm, I was right. like, nah. We bought a little shop. It was really cheap. It was like really, really cheap. Was like commercial? Property? Yeah, yeah, a little ah, shop yeah. just on the main street. It was actually from my girlfriend's friend. Mm. Used to be run as a hairdresser's. Right. Okay. And we've rented out to the Yes campaign. The right. it's oh, got right. like a blender mm-hmm. in it. It's like a basically a propaganda shop now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. They've had it since we bought it. It's uh, it's coming on five years now. Right. Okay. And yeah. It's never been a bother. And yeah. that I was just like. And then he just showed you like how passive that could be. Exactly. Yeah. Literally, yeah. I've never heard the, like I think I've spoken to him twice or three times in the last five years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that was so easy. I'm like, yeah. if you could just repeat and repeat and repeat, yeah. I was like, yeah. you just wouldn't need to do anything. And, and I think as well with that, it's like it's, I, I definitely think like, it's politics, quite a, bit of a seasonal thing with like the, the elections and stuff coming up. And it's like to have that for five years. It's yeah. Quite, I'm quite an undertaking. Was, was, you would have probably thought taking on that, that then taking on that property. This is probably going to be a short term. Yeah. 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 I did. And it was after the, the initial Yes campaign got shot down. 
Right. Right. They're basically there until they get independence or until there's no other <laughs> chance. That's right. what, like, when I've spoken to them. You'll be sorry to then you should. <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, it's, it's, uh, it's either going to go one of two ways, to uh, be honest. Yeah. But no, it was fine. It was a good, they're good tenants, and I can't complain. And it was a really good foot in the door for it mm. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, just on the back of that, then obviously you've done your property education with mm-hmm. uh, Paul McFadden. Um, tell us about you know Angus House Buyers and first seed property. Like, what's the you know what's the, the the goal with that? Well, Angus House Buyers is obviously the marketing company to actually mm. secure the properties. Yeah. Mm. So again, my main focus is to build my portfolio to the point where. I can piss off to a beach basically. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. that's the end goal. Do you know what I mean? If it takes five years, if it takes ten, if it takes fifteen, I'm not too asked. Yeah. As long yeah. as that is the end goal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like I want to give access to everybody to that. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Everyone's so stuck in this nine to five, go mm-hmm. to work, like yeah. and it's just there's better ways, especially in the twenty mm. first century. You don't yeah, have yeah. to go and kill yourself on site right, six days a week. Yeah, you don't have yeah. to do these things. You break, break your back in sort of exactly. as well. I know, I know. So, so the the goal is then with to, to source your properties for other people, help them build their portfolios. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, exactly. while, while while you're helping them, obviously mm. you're going to be getting some cash flow from that yeah. as well. Mm. So it's a kind of win win situation. And hopefully, um, yeah. Yeah, and are you are your plans to you know, the obviously Angus House buyers? Your plans to focus on your your area or <sighs> yeah, start with realistically, I because I'm there's only a couple of guys on site and I do the property stuff yeah. myself just now. I've got mm. a friend who's just completed the course, right, so he's yeah. going to come on board. Yeah. Okay. But trying to run both businesses through the day and not blow my head off. Mm. I want to keep it, because we work between Dundee and Aberdeen with the plant hill, mm. I'm doing the same thing with the property so that mm. in the afternoon if I'm going to price two jobs and I do ah, two right. viewings, I can yep. blend it all in at once. Right, do you know right, what I mean? Right. Instead of having to be, all right, we're working here all day and then at night we're way down to Perth or Perth ah, yeah, or yeah, yeah, wherever yeah, yeah, else. Yeah. Like, mm. I've got very little free times it is, so yeah. I'm just trying to no, make, make it. That, that's, yeah. that's really smart as well. In the position you're at, mm-hmm. with the you know being in the construction industry, yeah. there's so many people around you. You know, tradesmen who, you know, people might, um, you know, tradesmen might have an opportunity come their yeah. way, right? Mm-hmm. And they won't know that is an opportunity because they'll say, oh, I've not got the money to do it. But then you can obviously offer them and say, oh, listen, we can. There's, there's always yeah. Together, yeah. So you can always put people together, and yeah, that's the art of good business. That's what it is. It's, it's the networkers and yeah. then. Um, it is. And, you know, sorry, uh, no, like, you know, right, obviously, like in in that sense as well. Obviously, I mean, first upon the f- the fact that, like, so see when, like, obviously, you've got you work with people in the construction and that. Say if the the tenants are kicking them out or something like that. Like, mm-hmm. you've obviously got like property there. You could almost like, say here, look, if your chips are down, I, we can we can make sure you see through for a wee bit. As that's well. that's the big bonus yeah. from the plant hire company is mm-hmm. we're dealing with plumbers, with joiners, mm-hmm. with brickies, mm-hmm. with other ground workers, with mm-hmm. house builders. Yeah, all these same people, and the one common theme is. Everybody wants to invest in property. Yeah. Everybody, when you ask anybody, oh, what would you invest in if you got a million pound? Yeah. You know, that old, yeah. oh, if you won the lottery, what would you do? Yeah. 99% of people say property. Mm-hmm. I want to buy a house or I'll buy a few houses or I'll buy this. And like, mm-hmm. it's always the same theme. So mm-hmm. I always just thought, well, let's do something about that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. And then with, with like first seed property, your invest, investors um, side, um, you know, you've mentioned that you want to help people build portfolios, help them mm-hmm. uh, reach financial freedom, uh, freedom. Um, but then, you know, do, would you would you be interested in you know going into bigger developments and building houses and yeah. you know, actually? That, that is my end goal. goal. Yeah. My, my end, to be honest, not even the end goal. The only goal has always been new builds. Mm. I was on site with my dad from Christ, I was probably about ten years old. Yeah. Right. And we were it was out near Maniki, so we were brought a ferry in Dundee. Right. My cousins are from there. Oh, lovely. Ferry. Yeah. lovely! It's a really yeah. nice area. That's where me and my girlfriend are thinking of moving to. Do you know the Do you know the Andersons at all? Mm, pass. I don't know that many people in the area. Right, okay. But um, we were on this site, it must have been a good couple of hundred houses going up. And mm. I remember clear as day, my dad saying to me, every third house is profit. And my little brain's just going, holy shit. Like, yeah, I, that's yeah. Some, and I was just counting them all up, mm. and I'm like, oh my god, this is the business to be in. Yeah, yeah. Even then, and I just always knew I wanted to do it. And again, mm. Taking a flat bit of ground and putting a beautiful house on it, that satisfies my needs of that creativity. Do you know what I mean? Just to, to be able to you know, drive past that and say, oh, yes, Aye. we did that. That's exactly. something that you, you know, it's, it's all well good, you know, having a job and fill, you know, the way I see it is, like, I'm still in employment myself, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, it's, it's almost like you're filling a pair of boots. Aye. And if you weren't there, someone else would be doing it. But mm-hmm. if you're doing a development, you know, yes, maybe someone else would do it. But on the other hand, at that, piece of land might just be lying there doing nothing yeah, yeah. for mm-hmm. years. Another thing was like, I know quite a few property developers, a couple of my friends' dad are into it, yeah, a couple I, of them had like big companies, like right, proper yeah, house building yeah. companies and stuff, yeah. and 
the one theme I always seem to see with a lot of landlords is they want to just buy and renovate as cheap as possible. Mm, so uh, you, get, you get that when you build something, it's just like the job's half done. It's just it's just unappealing to be mm. honest. There's no there's no care, there's no attention, there's no and you don't have to spend a, a million pounds to make mm. something nice. Uh, you yeah. just have to be creative again. Mm. Can, mm. Like one we've just done there, we've bought the cheapest tiles literally you can buy, the metal, yeah, small tiles, but again being creative, it looks lovely the finish we've mm. got. Yeah. And you don't have to spend money to make it look nice yeah. again, mm. but mm. It's just that it's generic. Like how you do it, isn't yeah, it? Right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, like what you were saying about the earlier, like how you do something is how you do everything. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you're yeah. going to wash your car, wash your car wash properly. Uh, yeah, you yeah. Don't just give it a little half spray. Half half yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, That's exactly. one thing I've noticed. Like, if, if you started to half arse it and you, you know, if you half arse one thing, then when you go to the next thing, you're like, oh, well, you know, exactly. you just get into that, yeah. um, it becomes acceptable to, yeah. to lower your standards. Whereas if you, you know, my dad's drilled that into me as well from young, is like, just, if, you, if you're going to do it, do it properly. Yeah. If not, just leave it. Exactly. What's exactly. the point in lower, like, you're just going to lower your standards. And, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I was, it's, it's something I always think about as well, like, with, like, even any trade, any good tradesman is know how to do a job properly. It's probably the same with like, us in some sense, like, uh, like uh, a process engineer yourself, mm-hmm. like mechanical mm-hmm. engineer and that. Yeah. If you're doing a job, like, you want to get it to a good standard, yeah. like, and, and, and like, say, right, okay, I'm done with that, and it's like good to go, so I think. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Some pride in your work. You know? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. And, you know, you've touched on, obviously, moving. You've moved a lot, mm-hmm. and you're thinking about moving up closer to Dundee. So, you know, growing up in a rural setting, do you prefer that or do you want to be more in a more... When I was younger, do you know what, it's, it's got its pros and cons for both. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy, for a start, I hate traffic lights. Yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah, notice yeah. that anytime you come down the city, yeah. you're sitting there and I'm like, oh, but right. you read the maps, it's like four miles, but it's going to take you 20 minutes. Yeah. Like, right. that's just, it blows my mind. Because it's traffic and... Aye, right. things like that, right. so where we're from, we can travel to the next town and it'll take five minutes. There's, right. no, there's no traffic lights, right. you just get on, things like that. You don't get stuck behind the tractor. <laughs> well, yeah. this is it, aye. And there's, two, there's like two or three cars, two or three to take over, aye. and a single, like, a single it's, car. Yeah. It's got its pros and cons again. When you're younger, there's less to do, so you're more inclined to just go out and be a nuisance. Mm. Yeah. But at the same time, it, there's more tight knit community vibes. There's, it, it can be a nicer place, I think. Mm. Some, I've got friends from the city and like the standard of living, maybe not the standard, but the people as well. Yeah. There's less, I don't know, I don't know how to put it, there's more community based in a small place. Aye, but yeah. in a city, they seem to care a bit less. Yeah, I think which so. Which yeah. I notice. Mm. I, I think it depends where you are though in the city. Yeah. Like, I think I've noticed in, you see, um, in, I'd say more affluent areas because mm-hmm. physically the houses are further, further away. away. The yeah. people, I, I, mean, I don't know if that's it or just I mean, the people don't seem as close. But if you go mm-hmm. into some of the housing schemes, yeah. you know they might be rougher yeah. areas, but mm-hmm. the people all look after each yeah, other. And we've seen that during COVID, like see yeah. that the, the the amount of support people were giving each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was you know old people weren't able to go out to the shops, so there was people you know. Um, creating wee bags for them yeah. we yeah. see it first probably the done it in, in, yeah. in the shop as well yeah, yeah, was, you know, yeah. I can yeah. imagine as well in, yeah. in your, where, where you were up, up in, um, in, in your area was probably the same you know, well, it, helping each other just with that storm there that's just been passed yeah, um, I mean, we've not had powers for about three days and mm, my girlfriend was speaking to SSE this morning it's probably mm, not coming back on until Wednesday okay. so she was out getting little gas stoves and stuff and yeah. like heaters and a few other things to get out to the, yeah just to give to the neighbours because we were lucky enough to go out in the town to stay at my dad's but the other neighbours didn't Got families close, things like mm-hmm. that, so we're stuck on a little country estate. Uh, mm-hmm. And you, uh, would, you would probably have like motors and stuff like that from the plant house, some, some yeah. We've not, we've got more, yeah, it's more groundwork stuff, but mm-hmm. again, it's something that my brain's going right. We need to get some generators, we need to get some of these to start mm-hmm. for that yeah, yeah, situation, definitely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, um, in terms of like long term goals, you said about you know, becoming a house builder, property mm-hmm. developments. What are your other like? What's your what's your motivation? Or what pushes you? What's what is the you know, kind of your purpose? Do you feel like or your why? <sighs> to be honest, I just I get bored dead easily. Mm. Like I just can't sit and do nothing. I've been yeah. like that since I was a kid. It used uh, to be a problem when I was a kid because uh, in class I'd sit and tap or I'd swing or I'd uh, throw my, like I'd just be a pain. Yeah. Whereas now. I understand a bit more of what I'm like. I know, yeah. like, if I'm not busy, I'm going to be a pest. I'm yeah, going to be a nuisance. So yeah. I know that I need to keep busy, otherwise it's just going to end up being negative as right. positive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my main goal is just to be busy, just mm-hmm. to keep at it. Mm-hmm. I really, I want to. I've been looking at a development there with a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. We're looking at three new build plots. Mm-hmm. Well, it's one big plot, but for three new builds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
and I'm hoping this, when we, if we can get this put through, yeah. I'm hoping this is just kind of going to kickstart what we actually want to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it does take, you know, we had Jason on. Yeah, we did. Um, yeah. As one of the first podcasts, and it's something that um, we we're, were working on is a commercial to um, residential development. Mm-hmm. It's, in, it's in like a. Um, Stormy Banks. Stormy Banks. Yeah. Um, in the, in the city. So it's not really, it's not like a, as big as that, but Aye. I mean, again, it's something. You, it's, you know, it's quite a big deal you know, to kick yeah. off, yeah. get things going, get the experience, get the confidence exactly, and then that yeah. will just hopefully snowball into other things. It's the same as anything else, you get going with one thing, your confidence builds, yeah. you're like, yep, yeah. right, what can we do next and then yeah. we can do that and then we can yeah. here and that can lead to there. Yeah. It's just and, and especially in property where reputation is so important and, you know, it's there's so many people out there saying, you know, property sourcing, property sourcing, mm. but people want to invest us they're going to give you their money, right? Mm-hmm. They say they're going to give you 50 grand. They want to know you've they've got some experience. Yeah, so yeah. you need to have, be able to show, like, here, listen, I've done this, we've done this, yeah. it went well, these were the numbers. So um, what? Track yeah, record. So what? Give, so yeah, what give you a bit, a bit of a track record so that when, you know, they have a bit, they're a bit more at ease of, yeah. of yeah. lending you. You've got to have money. confidence, don't you, in yourself oh, yeah. and what you're investing in. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of the investors just want to see that you've actually got some skin in the game as well. Mm, yeah. They're yeah. not going to go, oh, well, how much have you got invested? And you're going, oh, nothing, I want to do it all with your money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, why aren't you using your own if you're so confident? Then, yeah, do you know what I mean? There's, uh, there's yeah. that like mm-hmm. back and forward because I see that a lot with guys. Mm-hmm. They expect everybody else to fund everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm Aye. like, well, if you're not willing to fund it, why mm-hmm. should I? Yeah, That's the way I see it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then at that point, it's almost like they've probably not got as much experience at that point. Maybe they're just sort of like, I've got a wee bit of fun yeah. sort of thing. And Again, experience actually, can come, you could be doing it for 10 years or you could be doing it for a year. It's mm-hmm. about trust, confidence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm an ability to be mm. honest like it's yeah. I don't think time obviously helps but mm. what you put in is what you get out of it like, yeah. Yeah. but, but I, I also I also when actually you mentioned when you build I remember there was you know the ones at Bunfield Road down at um, Pet uh, Simon ones is it yeah, but the Bellway ones yeah. that oh, basically Bellway. come 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 down from like uh, Giv- Givnock. You come down to Bonfield Road as if you're coming up from the bank. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah, so see like uh, across the road from the flats, like mm. the sort of flats. I remember there's a boy I used to go to skate park. I've known him for years. And mm. um, it doesn't come down as much anymore. But I remember like speaking to him. Like I ran past like one day. I was like, oh, Stephen, how you doing? And he's like, he's working on site. Mm. And his Bellway, the Bellway, are, like the company are doing. It's like, aye, aye, aye. Cause he done like security, I think, for, like uh, it's like for like concerts and stuff. So he got like kind of laid off during lockdown. And I was like, how did you get this job? He's like, I walked across the street and said, are you hiring? And they said, I start tomorrow. He just got a job, just like probably similar stuff to you. Just like that, doing stuff for Bellway, like just working for them. But it's it's brilliant the amount of opportunities you get. Like that's the thing. There's work out there if you're willing to work. I I noticed that like a lot of the trades I work with, Mm. the one common theme is, oh, you can't get the staff anymore. Mm. So there might be ten people apply, but only one of them's willing to come out in the rain or Aye. one of them's willing to get up at 7 in the morning or only one of them's willing to do ex- uh, overtime Aye, do you know yeah, what I mean yeah. it's in the freezing cold so I, no, I, just, I just don't think people want to work as much anymore. I think it's a generational thing I think there's a lot of mm. looking at people on Instagram or looking at people online and going oh well he's made it and he doesn't have to do anything so Aye. why should I but but you, that's the, 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 number one that guy might be just have rented that car right? yeah. <laughs> number two yeah. uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that genuinely do have that and they use that as a marketing yeah. and they don't realise that that guy's probably been at it for 10 years yeah. grafting and mm. no one's heard it, it's them. the one thing you never um. see is people don't it's like people are almost ashamed to talk about the struggle yeah, yeah. they're just yeah. like look at the shiny thing I've got mm. and like, nobody really cares some people care but mm. Cause anybody that's actually working towards a goal doesn't really yeah. care about the shiny stuff because yeah. right? yeah. because that's what Instagram is it's always like the end product mm. it's yeah. never the it's never the, the unpolished <laughs> uh, it's never the trenches moments yeah. where you're like oh this was a bloody like, graft and yeah. stuff but um, uh, it was mad so obviously you're sort of talking about like work ethic and stuff like that what what, what kind of motivates you to kind of succeed I know you obviously you said just keeping busy and like keeping your mind on stuff yeah. so like what is that other things kind of to be honest, I my end goal is to be kicking back on a beach somewhere, relaxing, mm. pretty sharpish. Like, right, so uh, that's yeah. probably my main goal. And uh, um, between that, I've got two younger sisters as well. Yeah. Right. And I really just want to set an example for them. Yeah, exactly. Right? Absolutely. I want them to see that you can do anything. Mm. Like, there's, there's nothing you can't yeah, do. Like, yeah, yeah. If you want to go and be an astronaut, be an astronaut. If you yeah. want to go and run a company, if you want to do anything, yeah. just get on yeah. with it. Do you know what uh, I mean? Don't let other people so tell see, you. Now you you mentioned that you know, kind of you want to be sitting on a beach. Do you, know if it, do you know think you would get bored doing that though and then maybe possibly because there's just, a lot of people that kind of can go off the rails yeah. with that and yeah. just doing yeah. nothing but so I mean is that, that, I'm taking it as just an expression just like you want to be able to go yeah. yeah. that yeah. it's <laughs> probably fair to be sure I thought that I'd be a hard day we played gold Jesus Christ 
<laughs> nah, um, right enough, I, but I would, I would keep myself entertained. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. prior to getting so busy with the property, I was training probably six to nine times a week. Oh, yeah. And... Were weightlifting or...? No, MMA. Oh, MMA. Oh, okay. And, uh, oh, to be yeah. honest, it was probably one of the best things I ever did in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the discipline, the, the graft, the hard mm-hmm. work, the... Mm-hmm. Repeatedly getting punched in the mouth, and it it does. you need I, to learn to just enjoy it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, same with me with the boxing. I started mm-hmm. when I was about sixteen, uh, and I, I've got bad eyesight, right? Mm-hmm. So when I take these glasses off, I can't see anything. I'm getting hit left, right, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. getting my nose all broken. Yeah. That. But it does, it, it, it does teach you, you know, that resiliency. I, I think keep going. everybody, everybody should learn oh, how to fight. It's Good. so essential, and it's something that isn't taught in school. It isn't yeah. even talked about. You get punished just for like yeah, it's just to defend yourself. I think. Like even not even in defense, but in the mental, it makes yeah. you mentally stronger. It makes yeah. you more respectful. It makes yeah. you more disciplined. Respectful. Like, really like yeah. you see a lot of wee bands on the street, oh. right? <laughs> that are all like think they're all less than that carrying yeah. the plays and that, but they've ne- maybe they've never really took a doing right, so they don't know what it's like. So yeah. like, once you get hit in the face a few times, like oh yeah, I don't really fancy that. So, like, <laughs> next time, you know, I, I don't want to go because if you get hit in the face with gloves, right? Oh, imagine, yeah. imagine taking them with the gloves. Oh, this is it. Knuckles, know, you know, 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 that's what MMA is. It's yeah. what. Like, you, you see in the film you know, guys can get punched but, 10, 20, 20 aye, times it's not like that if you get hit one solid there's don't, a good chance aye, you're going down yeah, yeah, especially like you said anyway, you've got mm. someone then on top of the head and you just bang aye, it consistently aye. and and I like, like that for me is like a meditation like yeah. when you're down there and like there's been a few times with my coach as well you're proper in the corner and he's on yeah, you and, just, and you're getting it relentless yeah. and your brain just goes right you've got two choices you're like you can either let him keep doing this mm. Mm. Or you can stop him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and right. it's so simple. Mm-hmm. You can't just like you just flop over and expect him to stop. He's not going to uh, stop. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, like, uh, so uh, you need to either get you stop up. him, you tap out. So exactly. Like conscious. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I love that. I love mm-hmm. the finality of it. There's right. no, there's no in between. There's no grey area. Yeah. It's either on or off. Right. And like, right. I'm quite like that in general. So yeah. that's what I enjoy. It's, it's, a, it's a very like um, how, how did you say it? Like, it's not but. Barbarian, but it's, it's, it's uh, human nature. It's yeah. like very, like yeah. you know, it's, it's like, raw. It's very raw. It's raw, isn't it? Raw, it's, isn't it? it teaches you a lot about yourself and what you're going to accept and what you're yeah. going to go through and like, mm. yeah. It's mm. again probably one of the best things I've ever done for myself. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I mean, like I like I watched them. Um, I, I remember. I, I think I watched like I have watched a few so I, like UFC fans. I'm not a big fan myself. Yeah. Like. I remember when it was like Dustin Poirier and Khabib. Oh, uh, I seen that one. Um, but I mean, like most of it, I think I was at eight o'clock one. But you know, most of them were on like five a.m. Oh, like on a Sunday or that. But um, and you, you go after the club and that. So I'm not like I, I'm not really big on it. But I remember I watched that one, and it's like it, it's very it's, it's a sport that's got two sort of ways or a mixed way of fighting. You could be one of the guys that stands in the ring and just throws punches, or you could be one of the guys that Khabib wrestling, just gets you like uh, you literally just yeah. like. Like smother you. He's yeah. like a sloth around you. Yeah. Like he'll just go like that and like until you sort of choke out or tap out. But yeah. it's it's such a I think it's a sport with such a variance of like fighting. Yeah. Like you just say, oh fighting, it's punching and kicking. But it's more than that. Yeah. You know? I think a lot of people think it's a very unintellectual sport, mm. which is such a such a mistake. It's unreal. Like yeah. you need to be smart to be a good fighter. Especially with missions and stuff. Like where do you put your like foot? What pressure yeah. do you need to have on them and stuff? You know. It's just, yeah, some of the smartest people I've met are fighters. Yeah, to be mm. honest with you, you mm. think they're just going to be like you say, some sort of barbarian that mm. wants to throw hands, but yeah, it's because I think maybe because it's in a cage and it's like you know it, it looks like that old gladiator style, but yeah. now with all this you know jujitsu and things like that, mm. um, you know there's very few fighters that are kind of undefeated. You know, Khabib always says, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. but because there's so many ways you can lose, so yeah. many ways you can win, and yeah. so many ways you can yeah. lose, it's yeah. really yeah. challenging. Yeah. So why not? Have you ever actually won like fights and stuff? Have you I've not. Fights? I was meant to have a fight uh, March 2020. Right, okay. I was in the fight camp for probably about eight weeks, mm. and three days before the fight was when the COVID lockdown got introduced. Oh, right, right. So I was actually... So you were training the whole time? I was training, I was probably training. Yeah. Like, like, just like, literally like cutting and that. Uh, the basically, and then the same thing happened again, the, the next lockdown round, and I was like, fuck this man. I was like, oh, probably no. killing myself, I've got dodgy knees as it is, oh, so it was right. getting worse, and then... Uh, when it got opened back up again, like mm. a lot of my teammates and that, they've been out competing, they've been fighting, a lot mm. of guys have been fighting recently and they've been doing really well. Mm. And I've been as busy with work, I've barely even been able to train the last couple of months, yeah, which is really, it's making me feel a bit of shit to be honest, a bit mm. guilty, but yeah. I just don't have the time. I'm yeah. working like 14 hour days and I'm getting home and I'm having my tea and I'm just knackered there. I know what you mean. Uh, uh, but I mean, like, I always, obviously, you sort of say like that dedication and that with sort of fighting in MMA, like, 
I remember I did swimming in that growing up, so it was like <laughs> sometimes it was like half five in the morning in the pool, Aye. so it's like that sort of, that sort of keeps you yeah. on your toes and that, and it's like trying not to miss a session, you just Aye. keep going for it. Didn't really compete much, but you know, it was one of those things that like, it's a good routine, yeah, it was a good yeah. routine, it keeps you, it sets you up kind yeah. of thing. To be honest, thing. a lot of it was my coach, my coach yeah. Dale, he's just... He's just brilliant. He, mm. he picked up exactly my personality type and who I am and how mm. I am. Mm. And he pushes and pulls mm. in the right ways. Mm. And he just, he gets, and it's just, yeah, probably one of the best. I've done a couple mentorship things, mm. but the best to date would probably be that yeah, with Dale, yeah. Like, right. That's like, like a sign of a really good manager, you know, if you read Alex Ferguson's book, it's yeah. like, that's yeah. what kind of one he knows the people, people individuals. Yeah. Yeah. Because they say, it's like, you know, some of the players would say, like, Gary Neville would say, oh, he was always soft on Ronaldo, Aye. but it was because his personality was such that he had yeah. to be more of, like, an arm around him, with yeah. other people he'd be given to. Roy Keane, he'd be shouting at Roy Keane and stuff yeah. like that, like, why are you not? Because he, cause he yeah. was that kind of guy, he was a yeah. hard man, he so was he hard. to be harder than yeah. that. Yeah, I know. So it's, it is, that's really, really uh, interesting. But mm. um, you know, obviously, with the touching on the me- the mental aspect of it, there of the fight fighting, mm-hmm. um, you know, do our shows called mental wealth. So mm-hmm. you know, what, see when I say that to you, when you hear that phrase mental wealth, what does that yeah. mean to you? What comes to your mind? Uh, it's quite a few things to be honest, mm-hmm. because I think when I hear that, it's about mental strength, mm-hmm. about resiliency, mm-hmm. and also about what you think you deserve, mm-hmm. and. I always say this to my girlfriend, she absolutely fucking hates it, but I always say that if the, if you believe you deserve it, the universe will serve it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she prob- again, I remember she that. probably hates oh, it. Right? But it's the same <laughs> thing, right? If you're not too happy with yourself, mm. and you're like, oh, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, and you're being negative, mm. you're going to get negative. Yeah, right? I, Whereas yeah. if you're looking at yourself and going, nah, you're putting in the effort, you're putting in the graft, you're mm. doing more than you should, you deserve more, you're mm. going to get more. So mm. again, yeah. if you believe you deserve it, whether mm. it's good or bad, you will get what you and want. That, that's 100% true. Yeah. It might not always be the actual outcome of your actions, but the fact you are taking action, yeah. that makes your mind you know, believe that you know I deserve this. And then you, I think it gives you more confidence as well, because I've noticed yeah. when I've not been working hard enough you know, with the property and whatever I've been doing, you, know, you, you have that lack of confidence when yeah. it comes to mm-hmm. doing a deal or when it comes mm-hmm. to meeting with somebody. You're like, oh, he's been... Again, you can link that to fighting as well, because if you stand in, a, in the ring with somebody or in the cage, uh, and you know you've been cutting corners and training or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The other guy, you're like, oh wait, he he's been grafted. That's you know, probably the worst thing. Every morning I was waking up going, I need to go for a run because if mm-hmm. I'm not, he will be. He will be. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you get proper in your own head. Eh? You're like, nah, I need to. It needs to be done because I need to do more than what I'm. Like, yeah. What what you're thinking? This is what's expected. Aye. This is what you need to do. Yeah. Aye. Because aye. if not, then what are you doing? Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? No, no, I think it would be like totally play with your head, especially with like fights and stuff, like especially like, MMA, boxing and stuff. Mm-hmm. You'd be like. I know he's going to be up in the morning doing a run. I know yeah. he's going to be in the gym after that. I know yeah. he's just going to be yeah. X, Y, Z. It's like I, I've been watching, you see clips of when people talk about you know, Ronaldo or people talk about Kobe Bryant and stuff. Mm. I say the guys used to just nuts, you know, with the mm. way they train. Yeah. You mm. know, uh, um, you know, just relentless, you know, uh, hard. Uh, even when they're up at that level, they're yeah. still going and going. And who, who's willing to yeah. do that? What was the one that, like, that was like Ronaldo came on? He only came on for like. 25 minutes and like apparently like, this was like when he was playing for like United and then like he was like after it he jumped on a treadmill for half an hour and everyone was like what are you doing he's like oh like, I didn't, didn't get enough like yeah, I didn't time. do it for me mate yeah, like, yeah. I just gonna like, go for a wee bit of like, mm-hmm. exercise and was like that's insane yeah, yeah, but that's, that's why he's the best at what he does I know yeah, it's that mindset like, isn't it it's, he wasn't born like that he wasn't gift like he yeah. might have talent but yeah. he's not just talent alone's not enough though, it's not it's, it's not it's hard work you're doing it's hard work man that's what it is I blew a hand with the ice cream question ah yes so this is the ice cream question so there's a local cafe and uh it's basically down the road, it's, it's skipping up. Yeah. Who we're still waiting sponsorship from, by the way. I know, there's no way to say it, they're paying for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> we get them free sponsorship. At least so, he's a couple of clones. I know, so there's a, like, a, you can get a two scoop combo. I think it's like two, three quid, right? right. But the flavours they've got, it's like amazing, right? Um, but we always ask our guests, what's your fa- favourite combo in a two scoop pub? Would you go for it? Mm. Mm. I would get myself some fresh banana and some salted caramel. Oh, that's pretty, that's pretty that's good. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Because, mate, I, I remember I went down and I, I didn't know what to get one night. And I said to the guy, Vinny, because I know him, he's like, he was like, what what like combos have you got? He's like, um, chocolate uh, and coconut. And I was like, what are they? And then like, I tasted it. I was like, that's so, what was the strangest one? Ah, yeah. What was the strangest one we had? I think 
Who was on? Oh, who was it? Someone said something weird last time. What did What did uh, Jason say? Did he not say something quite funny? I think he said. Did he say something mad? Oh mate, we we'll have to go back. We'll have to go, <laughs> yeah. we'll have to go back on that one. But aye, um, aye thanks again for aye, coming aye. coming down. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing this with us. Um, so I check um, check out Mern's Plant Hire and Angus House Buyers. We'll put the links, links in the links description in the description for that, and uh, obviously we'll have the, the logos yeah. up there as yeah. well. 